Yo soy Rory, hoy es viernes y estoy contento de estar aquí contigo. Well, we survived our second blizzard in like a month here in Colorado. This one actually wasn't too bad. It's uh, pretty cold today and overcast, maybe trying to snow rain a little bit today, but I'm glad this one wasn't a bad one. It was one of those, the kids were already at school and then it came in the afternoon and so they canceled the whole school district and all over Denver actually canceled uh, afternoon activities and things like that. My university class was canceled because campus shut down at two, uh, but uh, it wasn't too bad here where, where we are and I'm glad because earlier this week, my brother-in-law, my wife's brother, who was the eternal bachelor, we thought, um, a couple years ago, met a great gal and they just had a baby. And so we're gonna head up to the mountains this weekend and go uh, meet baby Cohen, who we're all excited to, to get to meet. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm glad the blizzard wasn't too bad because if it were, then we'd have trouble getting up there. It's about a four hour drive from where we are. So muy bien, hoy, you know, I've, I've been working on our, uh, on my next online course for you, which is uh, a complete guide to taking a medical history in Spanish. And as I was going through the surgical history um, lesson of that course, and thank you to everyone in the group who's been helping me with, uh, with your thoughts and comments about uh, surgical history stuff. Uh, as I was going through it, I was like, you know what? I don't think that I, we've ever talked about explaining basic procedures. And so I started to look into, you know, what are the most common procedures that are done in hospitals here in the U.S.? And uh, there was a list of 20, top 20, of course, top 50. I narrowed it down to the top 10. Data is a little old from like 2013, but hopefully you'll find something in here today that you can make use of as you explain different procedures with your patients. Of course, we don't go too deep into any one procedure. It's just really simple description, what it is and what it's for. You probably have conversations around risks associated, how to prepare for things, and you know what follow-up looks like, which actually is a good way to think about as you are studying. You know, you think about categories of information. And so if you're gonna expand on what I show you today, you might think of how to prepare for it, you might think of what are the risks associated with it, and you might think of uh, follow-up care uh, afterward or next steps or something like that. Uh, we're only talking about two things, which is what is it and what it's for, right, today. Okay, vamos, vamos a empezar. Empezamos con transfusión de sangre. There were umpteen millions of these that happen every year in Los Estados Unidos. So, first of all, KS. Una transfusión de sangre es cuando le damos, when we give you sangre, if you need to clarify that it's limpia, clean, saludable, healthy, you could add an adjective there, right? Por la vena, through your veins, ¿verdad? ¿Para qué es? Es para reponer o recuperar la sangre que ha perdido. It's to replace or Reponer and recuperar are both great verbs for replacing or making up, okay? La sangre que ha perdido, that you have lost, es para aumentar, increase, aumentar, think augment, and aumentar makes sense. Es para aumentar el nivel, the level, el nivel de glóbulos rojos, red blood cells, células blancas, white blood cells, plasma y plaquetas, platelets, okay? ¿Dónde? ¿Cómo? Puede durar entre 1 y 4 horas, se hace en el hospital o en la clínica. So, it's done en el hospital o en la clínica. Bien, moving on to vacunas. Vacunas. Wow, a lot of info in the news lately with vaccines and measles particularly, right? So, ¿qué son? Las vacunas son inyecciones para su sistema inmune. Of course, you can get a lot more detail that they're, you know, uh, viruses, things like that, that are apart, you know, dead or what. Um, I should stop talking about this because realmente yo no sé. Uh, para que son? Son para promover y fortalecer. So promover, promote, fortalecer, strengthen las defensas naturales de su cuerpo contra infecciones peligrosas como against 
dangerous infections like polio, polio, sarampion, measles, paperas, mumps, rubeola, rubella, influenza, tetano, tetanos, and diphtheria. Y tosferina, tosferina pertussis, ¿verdad? Ok, so, son para promover, promote, fortalecer, strengthen las defensas naturales de su cuerpo. So, the natural defenses of your body, ¿verdad? Contra, so you always vacunar contra, against. La vacuna contra influenza. La vacuna contra paperas. ¿Sí? Paperas. Ok, bien. Sarampión, paperas, rubeola. Bien. Intubación y respiración mecánica. Intubación y respiración mecánica. So, intubation and mechanical ventilation. Ok. ¿Qué es? La intubación y respiración mecánica es cuando le introducimos un tubo a la tráquea. Okay? Introducir is a verb to really put something inside of something else. It's not, as we say in English, oh, let me introduce you to my friend. That verb is presentar. So, introducir has the physical uh, meaning of putting something inside of something else. So, it works here. Cuando le introducimos un tubo a la tráquea. Okay? ¿Para qué es? Es para abrirle las vías respiratorias. Vías respiratorias, airways. Y para asegurar, assure, que su cuerpo respire normal, that your body breathes normally, cuando no pueda, when it's not able to. Durante cirugía, maybe during surgery, por una trauma, because of a trauma, etc. ¿Verdad? So, ¿qué es y para qué es? Bien. Of course, you know, like I said, you've got lots to explain around this topic that we're not getting into. Plenty more details. So, if you're uncertain about something, or if you want to run something by the group or by me, put it in the chat uh, box here, and we'll be glad to get back to you about um, what you're thinking is a good way to say what you commonly have to say with your patients. Bien. Next one. Reparar laceraciones obstétricas. Okay, so uh, repairing um, uh, laceraciones, tears, lacerations during uh, birth, basically. Bien. So, ¿qué es? Con frecuencia, often, después de un parto vaginal, after vaginal birth, el perineo, which is la sección entre la vagina y el ano, se rompe, tears. So romper is a good verb for soft tissue breaking or tearing. Se rompe. Okay, so con frecuencia después de un parto, so often after a vaginal birth, the perineum tears. <clears throat> ¿Para qué es? Le examinamos y ponemos puntos or suturas. We examine you and we put stitches para reparar las laceraciones, to repair the lacerations que ocurrieron durante el parto, that occurred during birth. Ayuda en prevenir, it helps to prevent. This is a really common verb that's mixed up in, in Espanol. You want to give it a T, but it doesn't have a T. It's just prevenir, okay? Prevenir, incontinencia, it helps to prevent incontinency, problemas con el esfínter, esfínter, ¿verdad? A lo largo, and I underlined a lo largo because sometimes you want to talk about long term. You want to use the adjective long term. A lo largo is a great way to say long term. Okay, bien. Cateterismo o cateterización cardíaca. ¿Qué es? El cateterismo cardíaco es cuando le insertamos un tubo en un vaso sanguíneo grande en la pierna y lo avanzamos hasta el corazón. So what we're saying here is um, <clears throat> el cateterismo cardíaco is when we insert, now instead of introducir, I use another variation here, insertar. Está bien, it funciona. Insertamos un tubo, un catéter, en un vaso sanguíneo. So vaso sanguíneo is blood vessel. Okay, so we of course have arterias, y venas, but
But if you want to talk about, in general, blood vessel, vaso sanguigno grande en la pierna, y lo avanzamos and we advance it, or we move it, right? Avanzamos hasta el corazón, okay? ¿Para qué es? Es para ver bien la función del corazón. It's to see the function of the heart, ¿verdad? Now, función es un verbo, es, es una palabra that we often in English want to talk about work or how something's working. Funcionar is a verb that you definitely want to catalog and use anytime you're talking about something uh, functioning, but in English we say work a lot. It's not working well, or this medication isn't working, or that procedure won't work. All of those examples are función, funcionar, not trabajo, trabajar, okay? So think of trabajo, trabajar only as occupation and everything else, funcionar, función. Bien. Podemos revisar, we can check or evaluate, revisar is a good verb, la presión, pressure, el flujo sanguíneo, blood flow, obstrucciones, any obstructions or blockages, y otros posibles problemas de los músculos, and any other possible problems with the muscles, las válvulas, the valves, y las arterias del corazón, and the arteries of the heart, ¿verdad? Ok, parto por cesárea, parto por cesárea. ¿Qué es? Es un parto quirúrgico. This means surgical. This is the adjective surgical. So we have cirugía, surgery, cirujano, surgeon, quirúrgico, the adjective surgical. <clears throat> es un parto quirúrgico del bebé a través de una incisión en el abdomen y el útero. Okay? So it's a surgical birth through an incision in the abdomen and the uterus. ¿Para qué es? Se hace, it's done. So, el, this is um, passive voice, ¿verdad? So, el parto por cesárea is done cuando se determina que es más seguro para la mamá, el bebé o los dos. So, the C-section is done when it's uh, determined or evaluated that it's safer for mom, baby, or both, ¿verdad? A veces, sometimes, tomamos la decisión. In English, we make, or we make decisions, like hacer, but in Spanish, you take decisions. And so we use the verb tomar. So a veces tomamos la decisión antes del parto. So sometimes we make the decision before birth. Y otras veces se presenta un riesgo. Again, passive voice, se presenta. So... Oftentimes you see the say and you think that's always reflexive. There's a couple different uses of say in Espanol. This one is say pasivo to create passive voice. So kanji is just like a third person reflexive. Se presenta un riesgo. So a risk presents durante el trabajo de parto. Trabajo de parto, labor. Durante el trabajo de parto. Y sugerimos cesárea. And we suggest cesárea. ¿verdad? Endoscopia gastrointestinal is the next procedure. ¿Qué es? La endoscopia es cuando le introducimos, here we go with introducir again, putting something inside of something else. Le introducimos un tubo con cámara para ver dentro del tracto gastrointestinal. So we introduce a tube with a camera to see inside the gastrointestinal tract. ¿Para qué es? <clears throat> La endoscopia superior, so upper GI, la endoscopia superior es para evaluar el esófago, estómago y el duodeno. So it's to evaluate the esophagus, the stomach, and the duodenum, ¿verdad? La esteroscopia, la estereoscopia, es para evaluar el intestino delgado. So in English, we call it the small intestine. In Spanish, we call it the thin intestine, so el intestino delgado. La colonoscopia es para evaluar el colon, ¿verdad? Ok, bien. And of course you could talk about biopsias here, you could talk about polipos here, uh, all sorts of things, uh, sangrados, um, we're just not getting super detailed with any one of these, bien. 
circuncisión, circuncisión, circumcision. ¿Qué es? La circuncisión es cuando se quita el prepucio, la piel que tapa la cabeza del pene. So, prepucio, foreskin, <coughs> la piel, the skin that covers, tapar is a good verb, to cover, que tapa la cabeza del pene. ¿Para qué se hace? Es una práctica con mucha historia religiosa. It's a practice with a lot of religious history, ¿verdad? Hay un debate sobre los beneficios médicos. There's a debate about the medical benefits. Así que es una decisión personal que toma la familia. So it's a personal decision that the family uh, takes or makes. Bien, continuamos. Ruptura de membranas. So rupturing the membranes or stripping the membranes also in the OB context here. <coughs> ¿Qué es? Romper en las membranas es cuando su proveedor rompe el saco amniótico con su dedo. Okay, so it's when the, your provider breaks your amniotic sac with their finger. Right? ¿Para qué es? A veces la mamá rompe fuente por sí misma. So if you work a lot in, in OB or labor and delivery, romper fuente is the common way to talk about your water breaking. To break fountain. <laughs> okay, romper fuente por sí misma. Si no, if not, la ruptura de membranas es una manera para adelantar. If not, stripping the membranes es una manera para adelantar, advance, o provocar, which is trigger, cause, provocar, el trabajo de parto. And we've said trabajo de parto more than once now. Trabajo de parto is what we talk about as labor. Okay? Bien. El monitoreo fetal. Monitoreo fetal. Monitoreo fetal, ¿qué es? El monitoreo fetal es cuando observamos la frecuencia cardíaca del bebé. It's when we observe the heart rate of the baby, ¿verdad? Frecuencia cardíaca, heart rate, ¿bien? And that works for all people, right? It's just heart rate, frecuencia cardíaca, whether it's an adult or baby. ¿Para qué es? Es para ver si hay cambios en la frecuencia cardíaca del bebé durante el trabajo de parto. It's to see if there's changes in the heart rate during labor. Nos permite saber, it allows us to know, si el bebé está bien, if the baby's good, well, o si necesita apoyo adicional, or if the baby needs additional support. Bien? Okay, so, explicando procedimientos. This was the top 10 from the article I saw online, and it gave how many millions of these happen on a, you know, in a given year. But if a procedure that you work on commonly isn't listed here, make a note in the comments section, and I'll be glad to uh, give you an update, give you my thoughts on a basic uh, explicación del procedimiento. Okay? Bien, and if you include some bullet points of what you need to hit for each of those, uh, then I'll be glad to... Uh, Probably research it first and then help me explain it in Spanish. Anyway, speaking of explaining things in Spanish, I wanted to remind you, share with you, that uh, if you're looking for some opportunities to really build your ability to explicar salud básica, but de manera intensa, you might consider joining my wife and I uh, on a medical Spanish immersion program. So we run these programs a couple times a year. If you're new to our community, you may not have heard me talk about it before. Uh, but every July, basically, and every February, we run programs in Central America, Costa Rica. Uh, used to be Nicaragua as well, but all that's on pause while things are uh, uncertain there with the government. Uh, but you get a chance to take some specific medical Spanish classes that also include general language and you stay with the host family, you do morning community health outreach work. It's not clinical in nature, it's more educational in nature. So it really requires you to be speaking a lot and explaining. Uh, and the exciting news is that we are uh, working on opening a program in Ecuador as well, which is super exciting. Our first trip will be November 2nd, anyway, of this year. <clears throat> anyway, muchas gracias por aprender español conmigo. Juntos realmente 
mejoramos comunidades, making that personal connection, helping improve quality of care. Thanks for all your efforts with this. Para más español, head over to the website, commongrounderinternational.com. Hasta luego. Feliz Viernes. Ciao. Thank you for joining me today on this video Viernes lesson. I wanted to invite you to join our community if you're not a member of the Facebook group already that I deliver these live lessons in on most every Friday. And also point you to the website where you can find a bunch more information about medical Spanish, whether that be courses or free materials for you or finding a private tutor to work with you online or face to face. And also let you know about some amazing Spanish immersion programs, either you as a medical person or your significant other as working in some other industry or your family. If you want to improve your Spanish and you have time and budget to go do some travel, our programs are pretty amazing. I think it'd be fun to work with you. And finally, if you have some document work at your clinic or at your hospital or within your setting that needs to be professionally translated, shoot me a message. Upload your document to us and we can get you a quick quote and help you out with your uh, Spanish language documents as well. Have a great day.